let's go ahead and create another new area by going to File, New, Area, only this time I'm going to name this area AR underscore 02, well, 02. It's important to remember that if you ever name an area exactly the same as an existing area, this may create a Boolean error in your toolset that will cause it to crash, so we want to avoid that. I'm also going to stick with the exterior option this time so you can get a glimpse of what it looks like. So select Next. In this case, I'll select the Tiny option and then click Finish. Now you'll notice that in this area, it's very green. There's also a red grid. But don't worry, any of the grids that you see in these view screens will not be viewable in-game. These are only there to help you as a builder to mark distances. You'll also notice in the top of our view screen, we are able to tab between the two areas. It is important to note that you are limited in how many areas you can have open at once. I believe the number is three, so if you ever try to open more areas than that, you will need to close one of the ones you already have open. When we click in the space, again we can use our mouse wheel to zoom out and to zoom in. You'll notice that in an exterior area, we don't have tiles like we did in the interior. Rather, we have an actual walkable field which is indicated by these lines here, the white and yellow. Anything that's black, such as over in this area with these lines, means that this cannot be walked. Particularly with regard to the interface, you'll notice if you hover over the areas option, it now lists both of our areas here in alphabetical order. Also, if we hover over our resources, you'll see that as long as we have our areas option expanded, it also shows both areas. We can click on either to access their properties here in the properties window. Useful to you will be the terrain option. Now you can select terrain and you'll see that it has brush options. If you select small, when you drag your cursor over here, you'll have a small circle that you can use by clicking and holding your mouse to paint area. You do have to be careful with these, as if you notice, if I hold my mouse in one spot too long, it starts to create sharp points in my area. This does not look good. So if we return to the terrain options, and under the terrain button, we select smooth, this provides us with a paintbrush that we can use over top of this to help smooth the area out. Again, you can play with the tools, which we will again cover in more depth in an area building tutorial on how to use these or change the settings to work better with our painting. For now though, let's practice the save behaviors. Now that we have a module with two special areas, as you can see here when I tab between them, we may want to save our progress so we don't lose our work. To do that, go to File, and then know that you have two options. You can save your module, or save as, a module file, which ends in .mod. These are useful when creating content that is finalized and that you'd like to post on the vault or in other places for others to use. But, if you are working as a part of a development team for a player world, or are in the middle of working on content, it's advised that you first save this as a directory. So to do that, go to Save Directory, then it will ask you to enter a name. For this, I'll simply call my directory Cow Chicken. Then I click OK. As you'll notice, it's saving my area, and has popped up the Verify menu here. If we go to File, Verify Module, it'll take a moment to load. As you can see, there aren't any errors displayed, so we can assume that my area is okay to actually play. We can close the Verify window by simply clicking the X. Now, if we'd like to practice opening new modules and such, we can go to New, Module. It will ask if we want to save our current module. Since we just did, we can select No. As you'll notice, we now have a blank screen, which is a brand new module with no areas. As you can see when we hover over the resource panel, there's nothing listed. 
But if we want to open the directory that we just saved, you'll need to go to File, Open Directory. You'll see that you're presented with a menu to access those directories. As you can see, it defaults to your My Documents Neverwinter Nights 2 folder. To access your module, you'll need to scroll down to where it says Modules, expand the category, and look for the folder named after the directory that you named your module. Here it is, Cow Chicken. So I simply click on that and click OK, and now it's loading. Nothing immediately pops up because I haven't opened any of my areas to be viewable here in this panel. You can know that by looking up here and seeing that there are no tabs currently open. So to open one of my areas, simply hover over areas and here you can see them both listed. I can select one to view its properties here, but you'll see that it's blank. This is because until the file is open, you cannot access these properties. So to do that, we'll need to hover over and double click the area. Now we can see it and access its properties. If you simply want to save the area you're working in, you'll simply go to File, and you'll need to remember to bake your current area. This is important because without baking an area, the module is not able to tell where the walk mesh is. It needs to be baked so that it can be saved and usable in game. So let's go to File, Bake Current Area. It gives you a warning message to let you know that sometimes this can be a very lengthy process. So go ahead and click Yes. When baking, remember that you need to be careful not to bake all areas because if you are ever working in an especially large module or campaign, this means it will take the time to calculate the walk mesh for all areas. And this really can be an especially long time. So for now, only bake the current area. As a note, when working, just in case you may encounter any corruption errors, it's a good idea to occasionally save a separate backup file of your area as a directory using its regular name, but also with the date afterwards so that you know when you created it. So if ever in the future you need to roll back to a specific date worth of changes, you can do so. Now that we're familiar with saving procedure, we can go ahead and close the verify window. Again, save our directory one more time just in case. And exit out completely. Now that we've created our module, and remember, we did save it as a directory, we can open it by closing the toolset, opening the Neverwinter Nights 2 launcher, then click play. Once you've clicked through or passed all of the opening movies, you'll have the option to start a new game, load a game, multiplayer, and your other regular options. Go ahead and click new game, and try new module. There it is. When we create a new module, it will appear, even if saved as a directory, under the Modules section. So click on that and select Start Module. It will take a while to load. We can go ahead and create a new character, make it anything we'd like. I'll just click through these options. Sometimes you'll need to click the Recommended button before it will allow you to continue, and a random name. Then click Finish. Now that we're in, you can see all of our chickens are here, along with our cows. So good, we've now made our first module. Thank you for watching this part of the tutorial series. If you have any constructive feedback or questions, please leave a comment or contact me via the video tutorial entry on the Neverwinter Nights 2 vault. Join me again for Lesson 3, in which we will cover the basics of planning and preparing a successful area design and what options and limitations to keep in mind when building.